Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'll be going through the North Melbourne versus Hawthorne game, in which I didn't really watch this because I um, go off and sort of at 5 p.m. every uh, sort of Sunday night, and I don't have my phone on. So I watch about the first 40 minutes of this, 45 minutes of it, as it kicked off at 4 p.m., and then I sort of uh, go off. Uh, so I sort of watched until Sheasel started to forget to actually get touch of the footy, it seems like, just looking at this. Um, and Tristan Cherry took over. So that'll be one of the biggest misses of the year for me is uh, Tristan Cherry on the uh, fancy front. And I think that was the, as I said, I think in the Swans game, that was the logical decision going Grundy over Cherry. One, because um, Cherry didn't have a bottom out option. If, you, if it got wrong for Cherry, you were going all the way up, it looked like, or you were missing out on, you had to trade out one of your rookies. So that was one of the reasons why I safeguarded against going Cherry. And also the other reason was um, Grundy had a 118 and his cash generation had already basically started because of opening round. So I think there was there was logical reasoning um, to go um, to go Grundy, and that's why I'm not kicking myself about that. Um, rather than the Harley Reid decision, I'm kicking myself about it, that one. So I'm not too worried, and you'll get people going like, oh, you should have gone Cherry anyway with a lot of hindsight bias. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of decisions that can go absolutely wrong. Like the, um, take for instance, the Martin versus Amon debate, um, or something, or the Martin versus Holmes debate. Um, that can, that can, that's the exact same almost situation that happened with, um, almost less of a reason to go, um, to go Martin and, um, or to go the top guy. And it failed in for homes or whatnot, and and it's better for Martin. So you know you have all these split second, all these split decisions. There's probably five or six of them that you go for, and you're gonna get two or three of them wrong. And I just massively got one of the finds of the year wrong in Cherry, and he is massively a fancy ruckman. He's not he's not a he's not actually a decent in terms of winning the game ruckman because his hit out to advantage rate is one of the worst out of active ruckman. But he just racks it up to in the fancy. So it, it is it is annoying to watch as a non-owner as he is slowly but surely putting himself as that sort of top five ruckman in the uh, comp in terms of fancy. So before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into this recap. So Sherry126, um, DT Live doesn't want to work, so we will switch over to... Um, to fan footy for this one. Um, Tristan Cherry, I know that he was tracking along nicely, but it wasn't terrible. I think he had 22 in the first or something. I think that's from where he was. Um, let me just see if DT wants to work. Oh, yeah, it does. Here we go. Um, 33 in the first. Wow, he really kicked on late. Uh, 33, 29, 28, and 36. So very consistent, actually. But you can see Sheasel here. And you'll see what I mean. He was on, you can just see here, 44, and then... Yeah, he was tracking along nicely, and then 13 in the second, yeah, no thank you, and then 29 and 20. Um, so we got to 106, an all right captain score, you mean when you score 106 with a captain, it's all right, and a 110 in um, Supercoach, so pretty all right with that. And then you just look at the rest of this team. What what went on, boys? Um, Curtis, uh, 80, 86 for him, three goals, two. Um, Bailey Scott, an 82, third, uh, 21 touches for him, six goal, uh, sorry, six marks, three tackles, 71 by foot, probably not the greatest. Um, Tom Powell, 82, 73, 20 touches, five marks, four tackles, um, a behind, 80% disposal efficiency. I'm pretty happy with that. I, I know that there are worse. He will have better games, most likely, especially by foot, but they did get smacked by um, the Hawks, so... I think that, um, and the Hawks tended to have a lot more super coach uh, friendly friendly players, so I think that um, they are ones to, I guess, sort of, um, they're going to take the, the pie of it, and that's why Tom Powell probably didn't score the best. Um, Davis Uniac, he has really fallen from grace, and I think he's almost going to be one of the buyers next year, to be honest with you, because I reckon he will turn it on next year, but he is... He's priced at eight seventeen k. He's currently going at ninety, so that's minus five or so on his average. And even if you look at, I mean, there's so many. It, it's actually going to be fun next year, I reckon. Also, even though we do have um this year as well to um go off as well, we still have a whole bit of uh, uh action to go on next year. But I'm so looking forward to next year and the underpriced guys. I mean, we're gonna have look at this Sicily sixty six, and he's. He's just getting killed by having no defenders. And he's almost going to be 
What's he averaging? 73. He's going to be so fun. To, what's 73? Like, let's just look at this. And I know we're looking so far into the future, but I am just looking forward to just having all these guys hit 659k if we go off the uh, magic number of last year that is currently priced at. Um, 659k. That's going to be so gettable. That's almost a 300k drop that he's on target for. And what's he priced at currently, even though we're going to talk about him probably? He's priced at 734 um, let's just check if that's 734 now. Yeah, 734 now, and he got a 113, and it says 113. So these are the break-evens and the prices that they're currently sitting at. So yeah, pal, 79 break-even, uh, but he's sort of, he, he, he's there as a top six, so he's fine. Um, David Junior not there at all. Nick Larky, 74, decent for a key forward, but not fancy relevant, as we talk about. Uh, Darcy Tucker, don't know why he's still on the side. Did he burn the ball this week? Um, Darcy Tucker, 88% by foot, so he didn't actually burn the ball. Um, then you have Aiden Court, and one of the most irrelevant players, even though he went at 92% disposal efficiency, his disposal efficiency, I think, is masked by the fact that he just boots the living hell out of the ball, and just, it goes 50 meters, so <laughs> it sort of almost, I'm pretty sure it counts as an effective disposal, even though it really isn't. Um, and yeah, I just think this guy is well overrated in the in the back line, and that's the real problem is they have guys like Core McDonald, uh, Biggie didn't look good at all from what I saw. Um, Colby absolutely butchered the ball, um, and then you have Dylan Stevens. He's all right, but he's not really there. I would say uh, Phillips horrific selection. Thanks for giving us Logan McDonald. Um, and then you got, I mean, Convin got switched into the forward line um, as well, even though he looked good all at, uh, down back. And then you've got, like, Jai Simpkin doing nothing up forward, really. So it's just a mixed match of what North Melbourne need at the moment. They've got Jerry, Sheasel, Curtis, Scott, um, and Powell alongside Wardlaw, um, Larky, uh, McCurch is going to be there, I would expect. Um, Zach Fisher probably is good enough. And then, what, Combin, that's 10 players. They got 10 players that are probably good enough at AFL level at the moment, whereas most teams have 20, 20, 22 out of the 23 that are really, really AFL standard. And usually the one, two, or three that aren't AFL standard, aren't sort of real quality, are the, the rookies that are developing. Whereas if you look at the um, Hawthorne side, you go... Uh, Nash, um, MP, Newcomb, Moore, McDonald, Gunston, um, Scrimshaw still quality. Um, Ginevan's there. Chol is on his day good enough, but we won't even count him for this sake. Amon's good enough. Meek's good enough. McKenzie's developing well. Sicily's good enough. Weddle's good enough. Um, Frost, even McGuinness is probably would would make it. McGuinness would make it into the North Melbourne side at the moment. Uh, Warple's good. Fourteen. And then you got D'Ambrosio, and I would even say Henry has um has weight has a lot more to um to give. Um, he's just getting limited limited time, but still that was like fourteen or fifteen in the Hawks who are another bottom side. So there's four or five better players, um more sort of AFL quality players in the Hawthorne side than there are North Melbourne, and it just shows the horrible recruitment that they've gone down. But anyway, I've gone on for a while here. Um, so we talked about Tucker, we did, and Cole, we talked about Cole Kircher, he's going to get back, he's he's a half-back at the moment, and that's the weird thing, they need to, there's no way that they can fit in Sheasel, um, Sheasel, Fisher, and also McCurcher into the same back line, um, especially when you've got, uh, Aiden Cole just booting the ball out there, and Bailey Scott as well, sort of on that wing half-back space as well, um, so you sort of cramp for room there, and one of them's got to move out, which is going to be... And you can't really, they've already tried uh, moving out Will, uh, sorry, not Will Phillips, Zach, uh, sorry, not Zach Fisher. They've already tried Colby McCurch and moving him out. Um, Zach Fisher, you gave him the promise of playing half back, so I wouldn't be moving him. And then you also, um, so you sort of almost have to move Sheasel, but Sheasel's so important to their side off half back that you can't really move him. So they're sort of stuck with too many half backers that need to play. Um... Uh, Simkin, not really fancy relevant. Stevens, never going to be fancy relevant. That was a poor pick by the Swans. We could have had like Sarong or, or, or Hayden Young or someone like that, but we went Stevens, which was a bad pick. I think it's because we didn't know the quality of Errol Golden at that point. Um, else we wouldn't have probably gone Stevens. Um, Fisher, Phillips, Biggie, Drury, Zerha. Zerha already looks like he wants to go to a new club, even though it's like six rounds in. Combin got switched at halftime and killed his scoring. 
Um, McDonald, Dersma, Ford, and Sellers. Then we go over to Hawthorne quickly here. And Connor Nash looks good, but he sort of has, the. it seems like, one or two good games. And then a poor game we saw a couple of weeks ago where he absolutely butchered the ball. Um, Ari Morrison, 104. Uh, MP, 104. Newcomb, 103. Really good fantasy super coach ratio for those super coach people out there. So an interesting watch over the next couple of weeks is I believe he's going to get back into form and start putting up 110s in... Uh, Dream Team or Fancy, and that's going to probably convert to 120s in Supercoach. So he's an interesting watch if he bottoms out. More 96, I really liked it. Um, kicked four goals. I need to see his uh, role and his splits. I really like more in the midfield, and I don't know if they necessarily did that. But if they did, then that's a fair play to uh, moving him back into the midfield. Um, McDonald got involved, and I think he's one. I'm really looking forward to McDonald. He's one of my uh, favorite players from an opposition side. And yeah, 94 and a 108 super coach, a 24 disposal, 10 mark effort. Would like to see a couple more, a sort of more even spread of marks and tackles, as I think that's more attainable than 10 marks and zero tackles. Gunston, 93, one goal three, and kick it straight, and you get a massive score from him, but not fancy relevant or super coach relevant. Uh, Scrimshaw, Chol, Ginevan, um, Amond, Meek got smacked in the ruck uh, this week against uh, Tristan Cherry, but uh, you know, what can you do? Meek's developing. McKenzie, 72, a good development, um, 17 touches, 5-3. and three. I think he's one that um, can be, really be useful as an impact player. I don't know necessarily he'll be the sort of racket up possession guy, but I think he can be really impactful off the sort of that fourth guy in off the um, half back, off the half forward flank or maybe even as a winger. Um, then we go down, Sicily, can't wait for him next year. Uh, Weddle, all right, 65, that's sort of what you're going to get off those sort of, of line-breaking halfbackers like Nick Blakey. Nick Blakey, I think, is averaging like 80 in fantasy, 75 in fantasy. Blakey is averaging 85 in fantasy, so he's actually doing all right, but you can see the same thing sort of applies to the likes of a um, Weddle. Sam Frost, McGuinness actually is on his own right, actually doing well. Four goals won in the last two games, and yeah, he almost deserves a spot on the side, and he can almost give a threat to tagging. I don't think he did tag in this game, but um, if he did, he might have um, might have tagged in the end. Um, but yeah, I, I, I generally think he could actually do well as a pressure forward, um, sort of like we have had in the past with Robbie Fox and sort of a Sam Wicks, but not, and he also has the ability to tag as well. Seamus Mitchell, Jai Sarong, I don't know what happened with, uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio, but I'm getting him out anyway. He's done his job in both, um, well, not really, he didn't do his job in, uh, Fancy, but he did his job in, uh, Supercoach. And he somehow got a uh, 60 in Supercoach as well. So, yeah, pretty happy about that. Would have liked to have seen him get, um, if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't an injury, I would have liked to have seen him got some more uh, game time and gotten even just another four or five touches. That would have been huge for Supercoach, but can't wish for everything. He's done his job and get him off onto a uh, primo now. But I, I don't know if he's necessarily injured yet, as I haven't heard anything about that. And it doesn't look like he's injured, given Eddie Fogg has the injury symbol next to him, and D'Ambrosio doesn't. Uh, Blake Hardwick and then Henry Husswick with a 14. So um, a pretty weird game and just uh, North Melbourne look horrific. <laughs> it's as simple as that. They do not have the call ready that they've got. They keep on drafting midfielders and I hate to put it this way, but at the moment the top 10 looks like all midfielders in the current um, draft setup that we have. And obviously that is going to change um, the current, the next draft, but and it is filled with some father-sons, etc. I think Levi Ashcroft in there, etc. But it's not looking good for North that there are a lot of a lot of just straight midfielders. I mean, at least they're tall midfielders. But, uh, yeah, so it may lend, lend to the point that Harry Shears will just stays off half-back if they get another midfielder. <laughs> but they just look horrific. And their midfield's a problem. Their defense is a problem. They cannot be conceding 100 points pretty much every game if they want to be competitive. And they have no one down there that's really there for the long term, I don't reckon. Well... I say that. I mean, in terms of defensive quality, they have no actual um, keys really down there. I think Combin needs to be down there, but they swung him forward. Um, and it's what Biggie is your second best defender, or Toby Pink. We knew this was going to be a problem when it happened. Um, but anyway, that is the video, I guess. And I will see you guys in the next one, which will be my fancy review, which will probably be a quick video. Fancy review, um, trade targets, cash cows, etc. will come out on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, you will have my usual Thursday videos because we have the Wednesday game rather than a Thursday game. So I guess I will see you guys in those videos on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday as we try and get through this smaller um, round break. So I'll see you guys in those videos. Bye, guys.